morning. Good morning. Glad to have everyone here this morning. Um, hope y'all had a good week, as best as you could have. Um, we always use items for a blessing box. Um, we are doing a can drive collection for Meals on Wheels. Uh, we're going to collect all the way into March. Um, whatever you bring in would be greatly appreciated by them. Um, our next family of faith is the 7th of March, and we drew collars to pick decide on what you're bringing in to eat that day. And uh, if you have not drawn a collar and you would like to, talk to Sister Wendy, she got a few collars left, and if not, we'll come up with the collar we run out. So, <laughs> so we can do that. We can do that. Um, we are going to play Family Feud that night. So yes, uh, come out. It's going to be a good night. It's going to be fun. Um, those of you who have not played Family Feud with us, it is a very good time. <laughs> it is a very, very good time. Um, it, it, it's fun. I'm telling you, it is fun. Um, we had our first um, youth night this past Friday, and I believe it went very well. I think everybody enjoyed themselves. Um, it was a good time. Um, in fact, we had to quit because we were going to run out of time. Now, I was going to call my parents and say, hey, we're running late. Y'all need another half hour, hour? <laughs> so we just cut it off. So, um, but uh, it was a good time. It really was. Um, I think they had a good time. You had a good time? Yeah. Good time? No, I'm glad. I'm glad. Um, have y'all picked pick the day yet for next month? Not yet. Not yet. So, um, other than that, that's it. I'm just going to go. I'm just going to go. I'll turn it over to our music. Page 207, the word right here. Sing it all
Yeah.
sir. Can I testify? Oh, absolutely. I want to thank God. I feel like the spirit here this morning. So strong, you just almost got me out of the seat. So Amen. Thank you, Lord, for all you've done for me. And all this church family has done for me in the past year. Yeah. What, what I got in my heart and soul. The world didn't put it there. That's right. The world can't take it away. That's right. That's all Amen. I got to say. Amen. 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 Oh no, oh, those of them doing here this morning, I'm going to throw up my whole sermon. I'm going to hold them here right this minute. I don't even know. I'll send this thing and he's going to preach or something. I'm going to preach or something. I don't even know. That's what this altar is for. This altar is for to come up here and, and, and get led to Jesus. And it's to come up here and get some help. Amen. When you need some help, then a better place to come is to the altar and talk to God. That's right. That's where you get some help at, folks. You get help here. You get help being around God's people. That's right. Amen. So I tell you, we need to be around each other a lot. I'm telling you, you get help from each other. That's right. You draw from each other. Amen. I think I'm going to preach out of Matthew 12 this morning. We'll see what happens. I don't know. I really don't know what to say. Um, Matthew 12. Uh, we serve a Savior that is absolutely trustworthy. Amen. He's trustworthy, y'all. Um, y'all know what his name is? He got all kind of names in the Bible. In fact, at Christmas time, our katana was based off of his names. Off of different names. And I don't know if y'all realize this, but... Uh, there's a name that we did not use in that, and because uh, he got so many, he can't use them all, we still be singing. <laughs> but uh, we do the best of our ability to give all his names out, okay? But there's one name that uh, I know I haven't used, I don't believe I've used, and uh, you find in Revelation 19 that when he comes back on that white horse, that his name is Faithful and True. That's what it says. His name is Faithful and True. In other words, he's 100% trustworthy. 100%. He's dependable. He's reliable. I can't say that about me. I don't know if I say that about anybody besides him. That is 100% trustworthy. You know, you may have said that little lie. You know that little one when you're a kid? That makes you not 100% trustworthy. Okay? So, um, he's 100% trustworthy. <laughs> dependable and reliable. Uh, where are we at? In Matthew 12, verse uh, 14, where we're reading, we're going to start at. But, um, he was talking about mercy to the Pharisees. Something the Pharisees know nothing about is mercy. They know nothing about mercy. And um, he just he just he gets done demonstrating mercy by uh, healing a man with a with a withered hand. With a withered hand. And uh, he did it on Sabbath day. And uh, you can find that in Matthew 12, verse 10 through 13, where he's talking about that. But our reading is going to start in Matthew 12 and verse 14. Matthew 12, verse 14. Then the Pharisees went out and held a council, council against him, how they might destroy him. Let me stop right there. How are you going to think about destroying a man who just healed somebody with a withered hand? How can you even think that way? How can you even think that way? I mean, that, that don't make any sense to me at all. But when Jesus knew it, he withdrew himself from thence 
and, and great multitudes followed him, and he healed them all, and charged them that they should not make him known. I want you to notice something here, in verse, uh, starting in verse 17. This is a quote from Isaiah 42, okay? Uh, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by uh, Isaiah, which is uh, Isaiah, the prophet saying, Behold, my servant whom I have chosen, my beloved in whom my soul is well pleased, I will put my spirit upon him, and he shall show the judgment to the Gentiles. He shall not strive nor cry, neither shall any man hear his voice in the streets. A bruised reed shall he not break, and smoking flax shall he not quench, till he send forth judgment unto victory. And in name, and in name shall the Gentiles trust. The Gentiles is anyone who not Jewish, who not of uh, Abraham's uh, bloodline. So um, that's us. We Gentiles. We Gentiles. Um, I want to preach just for a few minutes on this thought. I can trust Jesus. We can trust Jesus. You can trust Jesus. Um, what can I trust about him? Everything. What can I not trust about him? Nothing. There ain't nothing I can't trust with Jesus. I can trust my wife with him. You can trust your husband with him. You can trust your children with him. You can trust your finances with him. Your future and your eternity. You can trust with Jesus. Every minute of every hour of every day, you can trust him. You can trust him every day. There's nothing you can't trust with him. He's faithful and true. So why should we trust him? I got a couple things I want to say before I get into the to the message um, about trusting a little bit. I mean, what's the alternative to trusting Jesus? Trusting yourself. The Bible says, trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not. You hear that word? Lean not to thy own understanding. Our understanding got the goodness to lean on. I'm telling you. So what's the alternative to trust in Jesus? Trust the government? I have to think about how I'm going to say this because we can get in trouble if we're on YouTube. So I, I, gotta, I know somebody who did. <laughs> so I got to watch what I say. Um, we're going to trust the government. Um, they're spending our social security faster than we can get it in. It's running out. You know? We're going to trust them in that. Um, it's hard to trust your future in the government. I'm telling you right now, if government shows up to your house right now, and they don't care if it's FBI, CIA, FDA, whoever, if they come and tell you they're, they're here on your best interest, they're probably not. <laughs> no, they're probably not. Probably not your best interest is their best interest. I mean, let's just be honest. Um, the Bible says in Psalm 118, it says it is better uh, to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in princes. What it's saying there is the government. Princes is considered government. Um, you, only throw, you, only, you only trust them so much. Beyond which I trust the government by as much as I trust myself in picking up my car. You know, that's about how much I trust the government. Just be honest. Um, but who else do we have but the Lord the Father? Who else do we have? Like the, the, the disciples talk about, you know, said that, that the Lord, that you had the words of eternal life, that we believe that you are the, the Christ, the Son of the living God. There is no plan B. It's Jesus. There is no other plan B. There is nowhere else to trust. We got to trust in him in everything that we do. We need to trust in him. Um, I'm going to show you all something here that blessed me. And I think it'll bless you. It blessed me so bad, so much, Brother Steve, that blessed my socks off. You hear me? It blessed the plum off. 
So I, I, I just think y'all gonna get a blessing out of this too. I really do. Um, I want you to notice something. Um, this is a reason, good enough reason to trust Jesus. Any any reason there is, the Almighty trusts him. Okay, if the High God of Heaven trusts him, the Father of our Lord and Savior trusts him. Jehovah, the Elam, the God of glory, trusts his only son to redeem. We got to trust him. We got to trust him. In verse 18 of our just reading we just have, it says, Behold, my servant whom I have chosen. By him saying that, just like saying, I trust him. If I chose him, I trust him. What gives me trust in people? A lot of time, it ain't necessarily the length of time that I've known somebody, or you know, the distance of time or whatever I've known them, but it could be the recommendation of somebody. If I have a vehicle problem, and Brother Deaver says, hey, I got this man that worked on my vehicle for 25 years. I don't know this man from Africa. Y'all don't know him no more. But I trust Brother Deaver and his recommendation. And if he tells me he's good to go, he's trustworthy, he's not going to rob you, he's going fix to your, fix your vehicle, he's going to cost you, charge you the right amount of money, he's going to rip you off, I'm going to trust him. Because you said so. I'm taking your recommendation. So what I'm saying is, to take our mind's recommendation. He recommends that we trust Jesus. So we should. So we should. So he had no other better reason to trust Jesus. Uh, trust God. Trust God. He trusts his son. I trust him. There's people in here that trust him. So if you ain't trusting yet, you should have trust him. You should have trust him. I find as I read my Bible that there's certain things that, that God trusts, trusts his son with. And, um, sorry. But God trusts his son with certain things, and uh, we're going to talk about some of these things here in a minute. Um, I want you all to realize God, uh, Jesus humbled himself. He made himself a man. He looked, he, looked, he looked made himself lower than the angels. You know, he come down. You know. He made himself a servant. He washed feet, y'all. Think about that. That's humbling yourself. To wash somebody's feet, y'all. You know. The Bible said he was in the form of God and thought it was not robbery to be equal with God. But instead... Took upon himself a form of a servant, humbled himself, and come down, died on the cross. All they have to say about that is, what a Savior. What a Savior to do that. Amen. And God looks at his son and said, I choose him. God said, I choose him. That's who I choose. I choose him. He said, Preacher, I want God to choose me. Tell you how. Get Jesus. Get Jesus. He's the one God chose. God ain't chose no one in here unless you done chose Jesus. Outside of Jesus, you ain't chosen. There's several things here that I want to touch on real quick and we'll be done. Uh, several things that, that we find that God trusted his son with. First thing is, he trusted him with redemption. Trust him with redemption. Uh, you can go back to verse 11, which we didn't read, but verse 11 uh, kind of touches on, on uh, his, his plan for redemption. Verse 11, let me read this to you. And he said unto them, What man shall there be among you that shall have one sheep? And it fall into a pit. 
on the Sabbath day? Will, not, will he not lay hold on it and lift it up? How much then is a man better than a sheep? Wherefore, it is lawful to do well on the Sabbath day. It's an illustration there, folks. We sheep. We sheep, okay? It's his redemption plan. Um, God is showing that man, mankind is hopeless. He is helpless. He's falling into a pit. Is what it said. It said he's falling into a pit. And uh, if we don't get redeemed, we sure enough won't fall into a pit. A pit of fire. Right. Okay? Not, you know, that's how this, this how, how I see it is. Sorry, I skipped skip the page. But, um, but that's how that goes, you see, that he, he fell into a pit. Um, but he reached down. He reached down. And it don't matter, like I said, if it's Saturday or not, he's going to reach down. Um, we go back and read the Old Testament over and over and over. And you'll find that God sent a lot of people. To do different things. But he didn't send nobody to redeem no souls. He sent judges back. He sent judges back. And it was to help the people. Yes, it was. But it wasn't about he's helping them from their sin. It was helping them to, uh, to get saved from the Philistines, the Syrians, the Canaanites, and such. Is who it was helping them with. But there was never one man. In the Old Testament, that could save one soul from the pit. Not one man. Not David in his wonderful songs. <laughs> not Solomon in his wisdom. Not Samson in his strength. And not Daniel in his marks. None of them could reach down into the muck and mire where we were at and grab one sinner out. Not one. It took the pure blood of the Almighty to come down here to establish what God wanted done. Not one could do his job. Only Jesus could do that job. Only Jesus. So when God got ready to buy back what was stolen from him through sin, he said his son. Said his son. He's the only one up to the task, brother dear. When nobody else up for it, ain't nobody else can do his job. God said, I choose him. He's the redeemer. He's that door. He's that shepherd of the sheep. He's the way, the truth, the ladder from earth to heaven. Jesus is that ladder. He's faithful and true. He's the one I choose. He's the one I choose. He's true, true, uh, tr trustworthy in the redemption. Who are you trusting to get to heaven? Or what are you trusting to redeem your action? God didn't choose taking mass. God didn't choose no baptism. God didn't choose no regular man. God trusted his son. His son, God, his son Jesus went to dark tower and hung on that tree. And God said, I'll take that. I'll take that. That'll work. That'll work. I'll take that. That's enough. I'll accept that. If a man gets to God, he got to go through the mediator, the intercessor, my advocate. When Jesus was on the cross, he reached up to God, reached down to man, and said, this is how you get there. This is how you get there. It's a straight line. That's how you get there. I was looking at a book. I ain't read it yet. I was looking at a book. 
It's about uh, America's first war uh, on terrorism. And I know y'all gonna think it's a lot earlier than this. But it goes back to uh, President Thomas Jefferson. So yes, that goes back a long ways. We were fighting terrorism. Uh, during the 1700s, over the Mediterranean Sea, uh, Muslims were uh, from around 1100 to 1100, 1200 range, all up in the 1700s. Um, they were pirates. They were pirates. And they see, uh, like, England, and they'd be out in that way, and they would attack. And they would take their ships. And they would take them, take them prisoner, and sell them into slavery. Okay? They sell them into slavery. In uh, North Africa was where they were selling them at. Like Algeria, up in that area is where they were selling them at. And um, they found out about that they, it's kind of like what ISIS and that's doing now, basically. Okay? But anyway, they found out about it, and they were trying to get their people back. So uh, this is what got my, to my attention, and actually, and I said this is a, a add this to a sermon when I read this part. It said that there was a group of people that wanted to go get get these slaves back, and they were called redemptionists. You hear me? They called themselves redemptionists, okay? And they were uh, on a job for the king. I said, man, this is on a job for the king of England and for the king of France, and they would go back. And when they, when they sailed in, Brother Buddy, they flew in, they sailed in, and their, their flag they had flying, they had three, they had a, they flew in on, on the Christian flag. They had three crosses. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And that's how they come in. And they come in and they had gold and silver coins. They wanted to buy back the slaves. So they come in and from 1575 to 1769, they bought back 16,000 slaves. That's a lot of people. That's a lot of people. They bought back 16,000 slaves. They're on business for the king. Don't that sound familiar? Don't that sound familiar? I know the day that I got redeemed. I got redeemed. And if you're saved, you've been redeemed. Okay? There's a day. That he comes flying in on the cross. He's on the cross. And his blood, instead of gold, bought me. Right. His blood bought me. Right. And hopefully, if you if you redeem, his blood bought you. Right. Okay? So you bought. You bought. So that's how I, I seen that. I said, man, I gotta throw that in there because that's the same thing Jesus did. He just didn't use gold, he used blood. Blood the when they were sacrificing bulls and lambs and 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 and, and all this, it didn't affect nothing. It just covered you for a short period of time. Jesus covered it all. You got to think. Jesus' blood covers sins from the beginning until on through. He covers all sins. He covers it all. You ain't got to keep coming and sacrificing every year. He covered it all. <coughs> Second point is, you can trust him in restoration. In restoration. In verse 20, is where I've where I seen this at. Um, it says, A bruised reed shall he not break, and smoking fire shall he not quench, till he send forth judgment unto victory. That end part is, is later on. It ain't happened yet. But anyway, I looked up reeds. And flax, okay. And in them days, um, well, reeds grew by water. First off, a reed grew by water, and they said they can grow up to around nine feet tall. A tall, okay. And they were really extremely, extremely straight, okay. The Bible says in Ezekiel and in Revelations that an angel used them to measure a city. Measure the city. They used to use them for measurement because, well, if it grew nine foot tall, they cut it off and it was nine feet and they could lay it down, boom, 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 like their tape measure that we use today. They use a reed for that. Okay, give them a measurement. 
Um, they also didn't just use them for measurement, they used them to make music, like flutes, used them to play music with. Um, they said they mixed them with other things and they made some of the best perfume. They made a nice aroma, a nice, very good smell. And I know y'all thinking, what in the world does this guy do with anything? Well, I'm, I'm getting there, folks. I'm trying to get there. I'm working on it. Um, but um, out of the flax, they used to make garments be like a fabric, and they would soak it in oil. Uh, oil, in case my northern friends didn't catch that oil, in case y'all want y'all to get that, in case y'all watch that. Oil. Oil. All right. So, so, uh, but they soak the oil and they light it. It'd be like a, like, like a wick. It'd be like a candle, all right? And be a wick. And uh, sometimes they would get damaged. And they would, wouldn't be straight no more. They'd be bent over. They'd be broke or something like that. And uh, so they couldn't use it for what they wanted to. Now, verse 20, that's us. If you need to be restored. What I'm talking about being restored is when you get away from God. And he brings you back. He don't throw you away is what it says. A bruised reed sh re shall he not break. And a smoky flax shall he not quench. What he's saying is, just because you don't got away from me, I'm here for you. Come pray with me. Come back to me. Amen. I'll bring you back. I'll bring you back. Don't run away. Come on. I'll straighten you back out. I'll get you back on the right path. If the Holy Ghost oil is off of you, come on, get dipped. Get a little bit of oil so you can get your flame lit up for Jesus Christ again. That's what he's saying right there. Just like us. If we get, we need to be restored. And there was a day in my life I needed to be restored. I got away from God. And he brought me back. And he restored me. And if you got away, he can do the same thing to you. He'll do the same thing to you. He'll bring you back. He'll get you right on the right path again. He's a savior that don't throw you away. He's a savior that will take you if you're bruised and get you back running right. This church is not full of perfect people, but we serve a perfect savior. Amen. Is who we serve. Someone who is perfect. And he'll help you get back on the right path if you get out of track. The well, last point is, I'm winding up here. You can trust him with your rulership. That's the last part of verse 20. And where it says, till he send forth judgment unto victory. That's a prophecy of what's fixing to come. Um, he's fixing to come back and rule and reign. He's going to rule this planet for a thousand years. He will increase his government, his kingdom. Now Isaiah 9 says, there shall be no end. There ain't no end. There ain't no end. I bet y'all with any sermon I do, I go back to Isaiah, Isaiah, book of Isaiah. He told Isaiah so much. Isaiah is a very, the same thing. Isaiah is a book you get a lot of knowledge from. You just gotta get in the book of Isaiah. It's, it's, it's full. But uh, he's going to come back and he's going to sit on his throne with his father David. Okay. He's going to rule. He ain't going to rule just a county. He ain't going to rule just a city or a state. He's going to rule the world. Right. God trusts him to rule the world. His father trusts him to rule the world. We can trust him. Okay. When he comes back, the curse is gone. The curse is gone. I'm talking about the curse. I'm talking about the thorns. The thorns are up there going to be gone, brother David. The thorns we fight out there, trying to walk through the woods, get tangled up. The thorns are gone. The thorns are gone. He's going to come back. There's going to be blossoms in the desert. So it's going to be blossoms like roses in the desert. The blind and the lame are going to be clean. 
What I'm asking you is, are you letting God rule your life? God trust him with the world. You trust him with your life, with your real estate, with you. You trust him to rule that. Think about it. The Christians are all in the, the redemption and the restoration, but we ain't too in to let him rule. Are we in to let him rule everything? You're going to let him rule your friends? You're going to let him rule your money? You're going to let him rule your music? You gonna let him rule your time? You gonna let him rule where you work at? Let God rule it all. Pray about it. Give it to Him. Give it to Him. Some are saved, but they don't want to give that part of it up. They don't want to give up rulership. You got a song? With you? God's gonna sit on the throne. Jesus is going to sit on the throne. Let him sit on the throne in your, the throne of your heart. Let him rule and reign your life. I'm going to get real for a second. I have doubts about people who want him as a savior. But don't want him to rule their life. Let him rule your life. Let him rule over you. He done redeemed you. Let him rule your life. Let him direct you where you're going, what you do. Give it all to him. You got to pray for it. Let him have it. Say, God, where do you want me at? I'll be there. I'll do what you want me to do. Church doors are open. If you need to come pray again, that's fine. We got a song for you. There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins, and sinners blush beneath that flood, lose all their Spirit being here, we feel it, we thank you for it, and we're so glad you're here. We thank you for, for Buddy coming back today, that's a blessing. We thank you for Brother Harold traveling safely down the road, that's a blessing. Father God, you're so good to us. We don't even realize how good you are, Father God. We should say thank you more often for the little things that we just take for granted for day by day, Father God. Now, Father, I ask you, guide us, direct us, keep us safe, and bring us back to the next appointed time. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.